Welcome back. I've got a fantastic project for you today. Recently, I was taking a look at my home security and wanted to add some security cameras. I took a look at things like the Nest Cam, the Arlo, the Blink, and they were all pretty pricey and many of them had a monthly cloud services fee. I also took a look at in-home security cameras and what I didn't like about those was having a big NVR on premise that often had a lot of security issues and in order to view it remotely, I had to do things like open up firewall ports that could expose me to security issues. So when I came across this project to use the Raspberry Pi Zero and be able to set up an inexpensive cloud-connected security camera that would give me those kind of alerts, I was pretty excited. Let's take a look at how to do that project. First, here's what we'll need. A Raspberry Pi Zero, the Raspberry Pi Zero camera, a custom ribbon cable for the Raspberry Pi, we're also gonna need an SD card. And also helpful is a mini HDMI to HDMI cable, a USB HTG hub, and a USB keyboard. Now, before we get too excited, we're gonna go ahead and image our SD card for the Raspberry Pi. There are many pieces of software that can turn the Raspberry Pi into a security camera. In my case, I've chosen to go with a software product called Kerberos. So to get started, go out to kerberos.io and download their installer. Once downloaded, open the application and drag it to your Applications folder. Then launch the KIOS app. Once Etcher is open, go ahead and choose the Select Release button. I recommend choosing the very latest, and then select your platform. In this case, we're using the Raspberry Pi Zero. You'll be prompted to select your network. With the Raspberry Pi Zero W, we'll want to choose Wireless. Select your wireless network and enter your credentials if needed. In this case, we're choosing to use a static IP, so we'll enter that here, and then we'll click Finish. Next, we'll select our SD card. Once chosen, we'll hit the Flash button. KIOS will take a minute to download the image, apply it to our SD card, and then verify it. Once that's complete, you can eject the SD card and set it aside until later in the project. Now in my case, I chose to print an enclosure for my camera on my 3D printer. You can follow along and do the same if you like. If you don't have a 3D printer, head out to Shapeways and they can print it for you, or a website like modmypie.com can sell you a pre-built case. To begin, we're going to navigate out to thingiverse.com, which is a great site sharing 3D printed files. Once you get there in the search, enter a search term such as Raspberry Pi Zero Camera Enclosure. We've selected this one, which I think will work nicely inside my home. Select the project you'd like, and then download it to your computer. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and extract it. Now, I print my 3D files currently by placing them on my SD card and then printing them directly in my printer. The files I get from Thingiverse come in a format called STL, and we need them to be converted into G-code for the printer to understand them. I found a website called astroprint.com, which is also a great sort of cloud uh, 3D print controller, by the way, if you want to look into that. Um, but I found that it works nicely for converting the, the files from STL to G-code. So we'll navigate out to astroprint.com, log into my account, and then choose the Upload My Files option. We'll select each of the files here and upload them to the site, and in each case we'll print them, which will slice the files into that G-code format. Once they're prepped, We'll go back out to the dashboard, select My Files, and then we can download that G-code file back to our computer. Next, we'll place them on our SD card, and then we can go ahead with the 3D printing. All right, now just for fun, I'm gonna show you my 3D printing process here. We start by powering on the 3D printer on the switch on the back. Uh, I'm inserting my SD card here. Next, I'm loading the new black filament, and I'm just pushing that in far enough that it pushes out through the nozzle, which also has a side effect of getting rid of the bulk of the remaining white filament. I've already heated up the nozzle in the bed in that last step. So here I'm going and selecting the case that I want to print for my SD card. And now we get the fun of, of watching the, uh, the case print and a little bit of uh, 3D printer action. I've gone ahead and sped this up for you, uh, but printing this case in best quality uh, it took an entire evening, about eight hours, and it came out pretty nice. And there's the completed base case. Now this actually is three different parts, so it was rather time consuming. All right, so here's the finished case.
Next, let's get into the fun of assembly. So here you can see the Raspberry Pi Zero laid out and also the Raspberry Pi camera as it comes. Now, the camera comes with a ribbon cable, but it must be for the full-size Raspberry Pi, which is why we've gone ahead and ordered the cable specific to the Raspberry Pi Zero. So let's get started by removing that cable from the camera, and then we'll insert the replacement cable that we bought for the Raspberry Pi Zero, make sure it's fastened securely, and then we'll attach it up to the Raspberry Pi Zero itself. While we're at it, let's insert our SD card. Then we'll attach the camera to the Raspberry Pi Zero itself. Now, my particular enclosure doesn't give us access to the HDMI port once it's fully assembled, so we're gonna go ahead and connect it up before we place it in the enclosure. Here I've connected up my USB OTG hub, uh, to which I've installed the wireless USB dongle for my keyboard. I've also inserted the mini HDMI, which is plugged into my capture card in this case, but could be plugged into any display. Next, we're going to plug in our micro USB power source. And there we've got a power light. So now our Raspberry Pi Zero is booting. Let's take a look at that boot process and make sure it's successful. Okay, that appears to have booted successfully. So now that it's booted up, we already, of course, put in our wireless information. This should be on the network on the static IP that we set. So let's hit that from a browser and see if we can get to our Kerberos dashboard. Sure enough, we've got a welcome screen. So go ahead and click next. Go ahead and choose your username and password for your camera here and then click next. The Raspberry Pi Zero is kind of a, a little bit of a slow machine. Uh, as opposed to the full Raspberry Pi. So this takes a few minutes to, to log in. I've gone ahead and sped that up a bit. Now, once you're at the login screen, use the same username and password you just set up to log into the dashboard. And we immediately have an image. Kerberos was built with the Raspberry Pi camera in mind, so it defaults to it right off the bat. Now, our image is awful fuzzy here, so we're going to correct that in a minute. Uh, next, go ahead and click the configuration. We'll take a look at those options. Uh, first, we can give our camera a name so that, it's easily, so that it's easily identifiable. Then, of course, we'll choose our time zone. Here you can select which type of camera you have. So Kerberos does support a USB camera. I'm not sure what specific models it uses. Of course, the Raspberry Pi camera. And then you can use OnVIF IP cameras. Uh, so in the case of my exterior, I have several uh, traditional IP cameras that I use uh, with Kerberos running in Docker containers, which is another option. Um, go ahead and click on the motion icon and you can take a look at the motion features that Kerberos offers. We can outline the areas that our camera covers. So for example, uh, in my front yard, I have a tree that often casts shadows as well as a busy sidewalk. And I care if somebody's walking to my front door, but I don't want to trigger motion alerts every time the tree has a shadow movement. So here you could use this option to map out around those particular high traffic zones that you don't care about. This is also where you set up your cloud features. So if you've signed up for the Kerberos cloud service, which is very inexpensive, uh, then this would be where you'd put in those credentials. You also have a force network mode, which will cause the Raspberry Pi Zero to reboot if it loses connectivity, and the capability of creating heat maps if, say, you're in a retail location or want to track movement through a space. Once you've got all your settings configured, go ahead and click Update, and the device will reboot to pick up the new name and the new time zone. Okay, now that we're back up and running, let's take a look at that focus. The Raspberry Pi camera comes with a small, uh, almost like radio wheel, and it's sort of a plastic wrench and you can insert it over top of the front of your camera and give it a twist, and that allows you to focus it as seen here. All right, great. Now that we've got a clear image, let's go ahead and put it in our enclosure. So in this case, this is a screwless enclosure. So the Raspberry Pi Zero sits in the base like this, and then this clip slides in over the ribbon cable, and then the camera slides in the slot towards the front of the case. Then the entire cover slides in from the back and secures it all together. And there's our finished camera enclosure. 
At this stage, you can go ahead and plug it in anywhere you'd like to use it. It'll power up, come online on your network, and then you can choose to map it out to the cloud service, tie it to a NAS, or just monitor it directly. All total, the cost on this project was approximately $30, which makes for a very inexpensive connected cloud camera. You've been watching day six of our 100 days of making project. This is Jeremy from Make Tech Hack Tech. We'd love to hear more about the projects you're involved with. Please comment below and let us know what they are. And while you're at it, introduce yourself. Thanks for checking in. We hope to see you back soon.